another edition of A Closer Look. I'm Mark Shine with my good friend Mark Miller. And Mark, when we were in the studio last week, this place was jammed ah. full of items for the auction. Not anymore, my man. Had a no. big auction last Saturday. Great day on Saturday. Good weather. Good result. Good result. $85,000, it says on the screen out front. We want to thank all of you who came to the auction and purchased items. It helps keep WTLW and WLSN on the air. We appreciate that. We're glad for everything that you did for us. And a lot of work by Jennifer Beck and her crowd. Huh? Oh, boy. A lot of helpers. A lot of volunteers. That's right. A lot yeah. of well, uh, we've finished week three of the high school football season. Some of the leaks have started already. The rest are going to start this week. We've got review games from last week, and you go first. Mark. All right, let's take a look at Spencerville and Perry. Wow, they scored a bunch of points. 56-41, Spencerville ends up winning, but this was a close game. Perry led 22-21 at half. Spencerville was up 36-34 after three quarters. There were four lead changes. Spencerville ended up with 520 yards rushing, zero passing, did not complete a pass. Joe Lotz had 231 yards himself with three touchdowns. Kanan Johnson, 123 with two more scores. And Tom Caitlin chipped in with 91 and a touchdown for Perry. Quarterback Louis Hurston had a nice day. 243 yards passing and four touchdowns. Let's move down to Springfield, Ohio, where Lima Sr. went on Friday night. Springfield, of course, used to be south and north. They combined together in 2008. They have not won their first three games of the season since they became a single high school. Well, they were 2-0 coming into this one, and it looked like they were heading that direction again. Keep in mind as we go through this, special teams. Spartans are down 7-0, muffed punt by Springfield. Adrian Mitchell throws a touchdown pass or runs in a touchdown from 10 yards out. Spartans now tied up at 7 later after Xavier Nichols' touchdown. Spartans are up 14-7. It gets to 14-13, missed PAT. Spartans kick a field goal by Cole Miracle, 17-13, but... Muffed punt by the Spartans, actually not a muffed punt, a punt that was run back all the way to the four-yard line by Springfield. They score on the next play. That puts them up 19-17. Miss PAT. Spartans have a chance to kick a field goal, but an INT late in the game with 49 seconds left by Springfield's Raheem Moss. And uh, Springfield wins 19-17, giving the Spartans their first loss of the year. Great effort by the Spartans. That's oh, yeah. a good Springfield team. Yes, it is. Let's go to the WBL. This was a barn burner. Elida, 45. Salina, 43. Here's how it played out. Salina's Brett Schwedeman threw a pass to Dylan Hoying, a 38-yard touchdown. That brought them to within one. 42-41, they were losing with a minute and 11 seconds to go. Cole Merlin from Salina ran in the two-point conversion to put them up 43-42. Elida receives the kick. They're going to start their drive on their own 22-yard line with one minute and three seconds left. Isaac McAdams, in their typical offensive fashion, goes 7 of 8, 69 yards. They end up on the 9-yard line of Salina with 5 seconds to go. Enter Noah Adcock. He kicks a 26-yard field goal. The clock says 0, 0, 0. Elida wins 45-43. Let's go to the Liberty Benton, where they matched up in a BVC game with Lipsick. Now you're Lipsick. You've got two wins, but you've scored a total of 20 points on the year. And LB quickly jumps out 14 to nothing. But Lipsick's able to right the ship. They have a 63-yard drive. Took them 14 plays in seven minutes. That cap to cut the lead to 14-7. Uh, they score again on a five-yard run. That made it 14 all at half. LB gets a field goal from Eli Heaster with, uh, in the third quarter. That makes it 17-14. Looks like they're going to score again, Liberty Benton. But fourth and uh, from the one-yard line, they get stuffed. Can't put it in the end zone. So... Lipsick has one more chance. Dylan Schrader to Alex Schrader with 103 left, a 32-yard touchdown pass, and Lipsick wins the BBC opener 21-17. Getting off to a good start now. They're 2-1 and a 3-0 in the conference, 3-0 hey, overall. They sure are having a good start. Hey, with all those exciting games and all yeah. those points, there are some stat stuffers, oh, right? Yes, we are. got guys with big numbers. You got the first one. All right, stat stuffer. First of all, Will Holman. Have you heard that name before on our show from Fort Recovery? Well, they played Parkview way and won 48-26. Holman, 27 carries, 230 yards on the ground, five touchdowns, two one-yard runs, two two-yard runs, a seven-yard run. He also had six tackles on defense. Will Holman, great football player. They got cold water this week. That's a big game. He, he totes the mail a lot. He does, man. man. He, was okay. he saw on Saturdays. <laughs> Ottawa Glendorf, another running back. Daniel Beamer, 236 yards, four touchdowns in their win over Bath, 38-6. Okay, and then we go to Corey Rosson now. Corey Rosson has struggled to run the football this year, but not this week. Blaine Peterson, 19 carries, 237 yards, and two scores. Deontay Davis, 143 yards on nine carries. He has three touchdowns. 
Austin Price, 127 yards on nine carries. He has a score. Corey Rossin, 552 yards on the ground. Three guys with at least 127 yards. They defeat Arcadia 61 to nothing. Hey, I got another game with 300-yard rushers. LCC, they got the, the win over Ada, 41-21. Sean Thomas had 159 yards and two touchdowns. Nakia Williams, 153 yards and two more touchdowns. Logan Schultz, 103 yards and one touchdown. Hardly ever do you see somebody yeah. with 300-yard rushers. We had two games two this week. That's awesome. If you got three guys with 100-yard rushes, you're probably going to win. I think you're going to win. You're going to win, I guess, right. And one more. Let's go to Macomb now and Cam Norris, the quarterback for Macomb. And, of course, Macomb has been kind of a, a quarterback-centric conference uh, team. 11 of 19, no interceptions, 153 yards, three touchdowns, 105 yards rushing on 17 carries, one TD. That came back from that tough three-point loss to Wayne Trace with a 45-7 win over Hopewell Loudon. Macomb set in a pretty good spot now. They are at Arcadia this week. Then they have winless Arlington at home before they host Lipsick. So some good things going on right now in Macomb. I got another quarterback. I didn't give you his stats earlier when we talked about Elida Salina because I knew we wanted to highlight Reggie. Or not Reggie. How many times have we probably uh, said times. Isaac McAdams, you the younger brother of Reggie, and that win over Salina. How's this for efficiency? Isaac was 22 of 35. 334 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. He ran the ball 25 more times, 126 yards, including that last second drive that got the field goal and get, a, get him a win, 1 0 in the WBL. He's really having Two a good year, isn't he? He's, He's really having a, having a good year. Yep. Yeah. Well, you have been doing some research for us, and every week you come up with a fun football fact, and this week we're going to talk about winning percentages. It's fun for me. I don't know. <laughs> OHSAA posted their playoff winning percentages. What schools in the state of Ohio have the best winning percentage with a minimum of 50 games? That sounds like a lot of playoff games, but, you know, if you get hot and go down and go 5-0 and one year, you're going to be 100%. So Marion Local, number one on the list. No surprise there for us around here. 67 and 10 is their record. That's 87% winning. Then you go to St. Henry, Delphi, St. John's. you got to go to four to get Cleveland, St. Ignatius, and then back to the locals, Coldwater and Versailles. Five of the top six are all local, and now all are in the MAC. Of course, Versailles, almost maybe almost all of those yeah. uh, playoff wins were when they were not in the MAC, but how about that? Are we lucky to have the best teams in the state as far as playoff right here in our backyard. Yeah, and, of course, all of us who are followers of football in our area, and especially the MAC, we look at how the playoff brackets are going to go this year and all that Division Six, Region 24, and all those, many of those MAC schools are stacked up in that particular yeah. region. Yeah, they're going to play each other. Yeah, that's right. And they still have great winning percentages. They are. Well, in our Where Are They Now feature, we did a little research, <laughs> or you did, Mark, on one of our locals, and we did have some incredible this. numbers. We didn't even in, know okay, this. Go, go through our numbers. Well, Ben Phipps was our former director uh, here on A Closer Look. And we had he's a current ONU student. He right. was an Elida student last year when he was helping us out. We had no idea he lifted weights. And he just won the Ohio Weightlifting State Championship. For his age and weight class, there's Ben. He cleaned and jerked 213 pounds. Now, if you've ever seen Ben, he don't weigh 213. I'm not sure he weighs 113. He's not a very big guy, but boy, he must be strong. Next month now, he gets to compete in the strongest unicorn weightlifting competition. Don't know what unicorn means. In Columbus. So he gets to go on, and there you see some of the workout regimen. Ben is a CrossFit training athlete. And man, I'm glad I never smarted off to him. He would probably put me in a hold or something. The Ben Phipps that we knew here couldn't bench press a pencil. <laughs> he must really be working out. I, I, congratulations, Ben, and we're really proud of what you've been able to accomplish. Well, we've got some bright spot things we want to look at, too. And, Mark, you have some information about National Anthem. Well, you know, we've, we've tried to promote it with the help of the station and, and several of the area. Athletic directors have been very supportive. We put a letter out to all of them, just making us all aware of the proper protocol and procedure during the National Anthem. You stand still, you look at the flag, you put your right hand over your heart, that's proper. Right. A lot of us just don't even know that or don't think about it. So yeah. we're just trying to make an awareness thing. Well, I had a pretty good story at church on Sunday. One of the ladies that works at Shawnee Schools said, you know, our principal, who I worked with for two years, Tony Cox, made an announcement. And he explained the proper procedure during the National Anthem. She said, well, I didn't know that was the written procedure. And the lady next to me said, I never knew that. I'm going to start doing that from now on. So that's all this is all about, just an awareness People will make their own mind up whether they want to do that or not, but it is written and proper procedure 
to do that during the national anthem. You know what I think we'd like, I'd like to see personally, many times the PA announcer will go, gentlemen, remove your hats and stand for the national anthem. Why don't you just add in there and put your right hand over your heart and face the flag? Yeah. Wouldn't that be Very a great easy. addition? I'd, I'd really like to see that. Of course, we've been pushing that all That's year long. Idea. How about another bright spot? How about the Coldwater 50-50? <laughs> the winner took home $13,254 the other night. Needed a police escort. That's, that's, that's okay. <laughs> I, I was talking to an AD Saturday. He said, we'd like to have a football gate of 13000 let alone what that went for the 50-50. And one more thing, Mark. Next week, something we've been involved with for the last mm -hmm. several years. Fields of Faith are down at Wapak Kaneta next Friday, uh, Saturday night. Next Wednesday, Wednesday night, yeah. excuse me, next yeah. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. That's been a great yeah. event for SCA. Oh, a lot of fun. Youth groups come, individual students come, teachers, coaches. They show up down there on Harmon Field. It's AstroTurf. Don't have to worry about that. The lights are on. The band's playing. Kids are giving testimonies. It is a fun night. So come on out. Mark and I will be there. Come say hi to us, and we'll see a lot of students doing some pretty cool things. And it's night. free. It's free. It's free. There you go. All right. And then our question mark of this week comes from that cold water marine local game yep. you and I got to do. Let's mm -hmm. take it through your video here. Well, some people say, what's a flea flicker? You know, it has nothing to do with a dog. A flea flicker is a trick play, a deceptive play, a, a razzle-dazzle play. Cold water ran one. You're seeing it right there on the screen. It's a double pass at 523 in the third quarter, very important part of the game. Sam Brewing, the quarterback, throws it out to Jacob Winning. Jacob throws it to Jacob Hardings, and you can see it's a perfect pass. Not quite behind all the defenders, but almost a touchdown. Man, this was a big play in the game. And right away, you and I looked at each other and said, that'd be a good one to put on the show. So this is a flea flicker. You use it when you're trying to deceive the defense into thinking that that pass is going to go to the wide receiver and he's going to run with it. Uh-uh. He step, steps up and throws it to another wide receiver. And of course, play. the key to that is the quarterback pass to that wideout has to be behind him. So it's got to be backwards. That's right. And in the shotgun formation, that's pretty deep nowadays. Okay. Well, this week, we've got some big games to look at. We've got uh, two for sure. A third one, if we have time, we can get to it here. Let's preview our games. You have Minster and Marion Local. Oh, in the boy. Two 3 and O's, 1 and 0 in the league. That's going to be a war. Minster beat uh, Delphi St. John's 41 to 14, and they got six turnovers. That's a recurring theme with Minster. Marion Local beat Coldwater 13 to 7, and they had three turnovers. So these are opportunistic defenses, great defenses. They're going to play against each other. Of course, Minster, you got the quarterback, Jared Hulsman. He can run and pass. Isaac Schmeezing does a lot of stuff. And as you saw on our game last week, Nathan Bruns, the big guy for Marion Local, throws it. Nolan Habadaz runs it pretty well. So they've got offense, but the defense is the king in this game. Even matchup? I think so. Both teams to this point in the season have scored 89 and given up 14. So might be a 0-0 zero, you know, zero tie. The poll came out this week. You know, they're both highly ranked, of course. Mm -hmm. What do we need a poll for, especially after three weeks? I mean, isn't that kind of yeah. – I'm not a poll guy anyway. We're going to yeah. decide our, our championships, whether it's football, basketball, whatever, on the yeah. field. A poll after three weeks. I was Something a UPI voter. Here. Remember the old UPI? Oh, yeah. That was a coach's yeah. poll. I was a UPI voter when it was in the northern part of the state. I didn't have time to research yeah. teams and do all that. I, the you polls, vote for the team that did good last year. That's what you did, and, and it's kind of a carryover from that. Anyway, okay, I have Lima Central Catholic going up to play Toledo Central Catholic. Well, Lima Senior, of course, they're 2-1 and one right now. They lost that spring game to Springfield last week, 17-19, led by quarterback Adrian Mitchell. They score at 35.3 a game. They give up 19 points a game. This has been Toledo Central Catholic's league now. This is the seventh year of the conference in the first four, the first six. Central Catholic has won four of them. They have not lost a league game since they lost to Whitmer in October 26th of 2012. They've got state championships, of course, in there. Uh, their quarterback is Trot Durden. They've got a great wide receiver, a very fast young man named Jace Bowden. He was all-conference as a, a sophomore. He had two big touchdown catches for him last week. They're very, very talented, of course, and defensively, they have three starters back from a year ago who were first team all-conference. This is another very good Toledo Central Catholic, but the Spartans, the last two years, have lost this game by a single point. It was 35-34 a year ago, 49-48 the year before that. Let's see if the Spartans can go to Toledo, knock That's on the right. door, and this time break it down. Get a big win, bring it back home. All right, and one more, Mark. Let's look at Coldwater and Fort Recovery, since we have a little bit of time with this, and this interesting stat that came out about that is Fort Recovery has never defeated the Coldwater Cavaliers. They're 16-0 uh, against the Coldwater Cavaliers, or Cap Coldwater 16-0 against Fort Recovery. And the average score has been like something like 45-6. to 6. 
Big challenge, of course. We've already talked about home. You've been through Coldwater a little bit. This is a huge game for Coldwater. They're already 0-1 in the conference. That's right, and they've lost two in a row. First time that's happened in a long, 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 a long, time. long time. And uh, three, in a, uh, three in a row, don't know when that ever happened. But Fort Recovery lost a lot of guys off that team from last year. You know, Caleb Martin, especially right. the quarterback at Toledo now. Uh, this will be a good game. It's at Fort Recovery, so they get a little bit of advantage. They'll be right. they'll have that uh, deck over there oh, on that yeah. house that we, yeah. we, pre we showed there one year. It'll be a lot of fun. This will be a great atmosphere, but a huge game for both teams. Fort Recovery, a couple of close wins over Lehman and over a lossable game to Valley View by three, so they've been in every game. Let's put our broadcast schedule up for this week. Lipsick and Macomb Volleyball, I get to do that one. That's a Wednesday night game that will re-air on Thursday night. And we've got some soccer up there. The football game you and I are going to do, Crestview at Bluffton this week. There's that cold water fort recovery football game as well. Liberty Benton and Van Buren, that's a big game in that conference. Minster Marion Local, Mark previewed a moment ago. Marion Local and Fort Laramie, we have big volleyball every Sunday night at 8 o'clock. And then we've got Liberty Benton and LCC girls soccer coming up at 10 o'clock on Monday night as well. Well, time to enter another edition of A Closer Look. You've been watching high school football on WOSN. <laughs>